In this tutorial, we are going to be talking about referencing objects from Rhino to Grasshopper. Let's get started by going to Component Palettes under Params Geometry. Click, drag, and drop a couple of point parameter objects. These are going to be capsules containing our data. Let's select the first one, right click on it, and select Set One Point. As you can see, I already have several points here in my Rhino viewport. I will select just one of them. So now when the point is green, is active, you might, you might also need to click enter after selecting the point. So now the, the, the preview is not the best. So as you can see, when my point is not selecting, it's kind of hard to see which of the points are grasshopper ones. So I'm just going to keep this one for now selected. And um, so this point is reference from Rhino as a point. If we go to params input panel, you can see that the output is in fact a reference point. Within Rhino, I can select that point and transform it. I can move it around and it would be automatically updated within Grasshopper. So just to make, make sure that within your Rhino um, interface, you have your gumball property turned on, gumball option turned on, so that you would be able to move your point. So this is one type of point, let's say that. Let's now see the other type. Let's right click on another capsule, point capsule, right click on it and select set one point. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the Rhino command prompt on your upper left corner, at least by default, but anyhow, in your Rhino command prompt, you can go and you can change the type of your point. And it says here, point object to reference. I click on type and instead of point, I'm going to choose coordinate. As I type coordinate, now I just need to choose point location. So I can just pick any location. And you see, I have a point now. Let's go to Grasshopper under params, input panel, click drag and drop. And what you see now, it's just a coordinate. And if you try to select that point within Rhino, you can't, since it's not a geometry within Rhino. It's, it's a point coordinate within Grasshopper. You can, however, if you select that point coordinate within, your, within Grasshopper, move with gumball. If you don't see the small gumball, this is a Grasshopper gumball, you have to go into main menu bar within Grasshopper under display and make sure you have your gumball option turned on. Let's select both of these points now. So in this scenario, I have two gumballs. So the bigger one is from Rhino interface. It has these arches representing planes and that the object can be rotated within these certain planes and it also has this white bubble for settings. Meanwhile, the gumball, gumball from Grasshopper is much smaller and it doesn't have those additional properties for settings or for rotation. I'm going to right click on my panel within Grasshopper and just type in here core, 
coordinates so that it's more visible that in the first one we only have a reference point and on the second one so first one reference point which is automatically updated and the second one is actually a coordinate within grasshopper okay so we have this figured out now so let's go to params geometry pick a point capsule point parameter object right click on this one once again but this time let's select set multiple points select this one and let's just select the points as i start doing that you can see a blue line being drawn this represents the order of those points that i'm selecting so because i'm selecting now more than one object grasshopper will consider this as a list of points and since it's a list of points every point needs to have its own place within that list so the order that the order that i have chosen now will be the order in which those po these points will be stored within the list click enter and i'm going to show what i mean let's go to display vector point list click drag and drop and let's connect our multiple point component with the point list let's right click on number s and set number and let's set one and commit changes so as you oh, it might be harder now to remember that but as you remember i started from here from zero and we have this one continuous line until seven let's go to params input panel and here i just wanted to show you that in fact it is seven points within this list and now each of those points represent that you see the number next to represents that point let's select the small definition that we have just made use ctrl c ctrl v to make a copy and drag it down select the container point container and right click on it and select clear values so that this one is empty and then let's just turn off this preview let's right click on it and we can turn on or off the preview let's now go to our empty definition right click on the point parameter container and again select set multiple set multiple points but this time let's select all of them all of these points at once i'm going to click with the le left key and just drag this area for selection and as you can see right away uh, the blue line blue lines doesn't doesn't look anything like it looked before let's click enter let's go to our canvas toolbar and let's choose only draw preview geometry only draw preview for select geometry now let's turn on our point preview and let's see so this was the list that the order in which the points i have selected myself one by one and this one is the order in which points are selected when i selected them all at once so this second order you could say it's random but more often than not items are selected in order 
in which they were created or modified in Rhino. So let's say if I go to Rhino, select point, and just create several points, which obvious order, let's say the diagonal, then select those points, go to Grasshopper, select the container, point parameter capsule that I want to assign it to, reference it to, and then right click and select set multiple points. And as you can see, the order matches. You can also go to display vector and use point order. This is better. So just gonna hide these ones. But what would happen if we now would modify these points? Let's take number two, move it around, and number three. Okay. And let's clear the selection. And then set multiple again. You can see that the order has changed based on the points that were modified. So let's say now I'm going to take number one. I'm going to just modify it, put it there. And I'm also going to copy our definition, right click, set clear the values, right click again, set multiple points, select and click enter. I'm going to go to my preview settings, select only draw preview geometry for selected objects, and I'm just going to select so my previous number one which i moved now became number five sort of that was the one uh, last modified just to visualize possible confusion here and uh, but it's also very important to know because often the success of your definition, or at least how easy or difficult it was to create the definition depends on, upon the input. And if you have this messy data structure or messy list um, at the very beginning, it's, it, it, it makes it much harder to create to create a proper definition i would like to introduce you to the last uh, parameter object in this tutorial for multiple reference multiple object reference let's go under params geometry and select geometry pipeline click drag and drop what this object does it allows you to automatically transfer data from a particular layer in Rhino. I'm going to move my grasshopper window to the left so that I can see my Rhino layers. I will go to Layers tab. And as you can see, I have default surface curves, points, and shapes. Let's go to Points, right-click on it, and select Rename Layer. And we're going to just use it to copy the name of the layer. Let's use Control C to copy. Now go, let's go back to Grasshopper. And now, as you can see here, we have layer. And where is layer? Here is layer name. And then we just double click on it and click Control V to copy and uh, to paste layer's name. This, the name here, it's actually the name for an object. I'm not going to be talking about this here. It's uh, 
it's a bit more advanced for specifying the particular object. But as you can see, parameter object still has this orange bubble saying that floating parameter pipeline failed to collect data. And this is because we have to set the type of data we want to transfer. So if I choose curves, there are no curves in this layer. VREPs, nope. Meshes, nope. There's only points. And as soon as I double click points, you see that this capsule doesn't have the, the, the orange balloon anymore. And the panel shows the output that there are points here. And this additional point parameter I'm using just for visual purposes now. So if I select this one, okay, so not visible. Let's go to display, preview, and select dot display. This is just because it's, uh, it's really annoying when it's so not visible. Okay, and we can set the size, right click on it, set number and type 0 0.5, select commit changes. Okay, so now we have our points that are automatically transferred from Rhino layer. This could be very convenient. Maybe in this one, I would also talk about if we go to params, utilities, and use data then. So maybe sometimes when we want to have something uh, automatically done, of course, there would be instances when we don't want to have it automatically, always that data just flowing through for, for any reason. So let's say, we don't want certain parts to be uh, calculated. So the component data then allows you to do just that. It allows you to control when to trans allow the flow of the data through the wire. So if I change the location of this point, you can see that data then component updates. And I can click again to say, OK, let's update the flow. Let's transfer the points to this dot display. So I think we covered all that I wanted to cover in this tutorial about referencing objects from Rhino to Grasshopper. See you in the next one.